Hey dude, Thub here. I've already got a good start. Uh, pretty good start. It's got one last one, and we gotta go fast, because uh, this is where I'm gonna run into the truck if I do it all. So, fingers crossed, let's do the thing. <laughs> of glass because I sure don't feel like carrying those up and down the street if I don't have to. What's oh, a crispy minus 15 today? Ball game is weak on this street today. Eh, such is the way these things go sometimes. There we go. Well, normally I'd prefer not to make such a mess, but this one warranted digging deep. Can't rain all the time. wonder where the big trucks are, though. They're usually out here by now. That's a nice surprise. Blessings. You're a legend. <sighs> All right. Now I like this street because there's one bin in particular that is often pretty decent. Ooh. I don't think it's this one, but this one certainly knows what I like. Kevin Buzzkill himself. <laughs> I know I heard another can in there. But is spending 10 minutes digging for it a good use of time? Oh, wow. Getting pretty heavy here. No big deal, almost done this lap. That's too, that's too bad. That's the one that's normally good. Oh, my mistake. I'm gonna go look around to see if there's anywhere I can fill one more bag. But that's not bad for a morning. Not bad. Hey, I just found something pretty good. Yeah. Top's a little, uh, Top is a little gross, but I think I can handle that. Already we're back home, which is swell. That was a decent bottle day. Above average, for sure. But we found some other goodies too. Um, this The only thing you didn't see is this thing here. We found this in a, in a rollout bin. Uh, I wasn't recording, because I just wanted to see if there was anything. So yeah, that's one battery, and I was just gonna crack the battery off, but um, these heavy wires, sometimes they're not copper, like sometimes they're copper-coated aluminum, this time they're actual copper. So I figured I'd take the whole thing and deal with it at home. Uh, then I found another chance to win a free switch. That contest closes today, so I was actually looking for these. And then that piece of furniture, which you guys already saw. Let's bring that inside. <laughs> The earmuffs are uh, for when I go down to the bottle depot. You might not think about it at first, but um, that glass, the sound of like a bunch of wine bottles crashing down together over and over and over again, not just yours, but everybody else's, that will give you ear damage. And I like my ears. I mean, I love bass, but I like the rest of the music too. I'm gonna get all this gross stuff off and then we'll take a look at that. All right, I'm nice and clean. Let's, uh, okay, I, I did a bunch of other stuff too, but now I'm ready. Let's move on with this project. Okay, so if we are going to fix this thing up, we're not gonna be able to do it without investing a little bit of money, um, which is fine, because sometimes you gotta spend money to make money. So we are here at the Rona. I brought in the drawer as an example. We're gonna see if we can find a gel stain that'll suit us, suit our needs. Battery's real cold, give me a second. 
there are a lot of stains here, and it was not easy to choose. Mostly because their selection is um, a little weak. I found one in here that matched perfectly. They don't have it in stock. I found one of uh, these that matched perfect. No. Everything that matched perfectly, they do not have in stock. Uh, and there's a lot of different options here. I eventually settled on antique walnut antique walnut satin because it's a pretty close match and if I'm not going to get the match perfectly I might as well go with the one that's easy. This one is the polyurethane and the stain all rolled up into one. So $11 and we get to we get to play with furniture. Yay. Let's go home. Okay back at home. Out in the garage so I don't make a huge mess inside the house. And of course we're gonna have to get this off. So I'm gonna start with some steel wall. Just see how much I can remove like this. Something about going with the grain. Nah, that takes forever. We're just gonna jump straight to the power drills. Now I'm gonna start with 120 grit because I don't want to go crazy and ruin the thing. Um, and I, as much as I don't want this to get all gummed up and all right I changed my mind we're gonna start with something a little rougher straight up that was kind of awful I really didn't enjoy that but that's because it took half an hour and it's like minus 17 yeah minus 17 out there so I didn't enjoy that, but my hands are warmed up now, and I think the results are pretty good. That is a nice piece of oak veneer, which is one of the reasons why I didn't want to use um, a chemical stripper. Partially because I was concerned it might um, cause the glue that holds the veneer onto the cheaper wood underneath to start separating and lifting, and I didn't want to deal with it. And also because it's just the value in this piece just isn't there. Most I'm gonna be able to sell it for is 40 bucks, but probably not, so I didn't wanna spend $40 worth of materials, even if I would have them for later. Now, we're gonna give this thing a wipe down with a clean rag. Oh, I, um, I started it with 100 and finished with 150 grit. Now I chose a one-step stain, uh, stain and polyurethane in one step. The one thing this thing wouldn't do is pre-treat or condition the wood. Um, but it sounds like that's only necessary when it's a particularly soft wood, and because this is actually a piece of oak, even though it's just veneer, it's um, not a soft wood, so I shouldn't need to do that. This is still a bit of an experiment, but I think it should work out fine. I'll stir it up and got my crappy clothes on. Let's get to it. This does not look dark enough. clean brush so that's too bad but it is looking pretty good um it's gonna need a second coat but that shouldn't be a problem so i'm just gonna grab a piece of toilet paper and wipe off the edges so i don't get super drippy and then we're gonna let that dry welcome back some time has passed and this thing is dry so i'm not sure if you can really see it but there's some specks and such in there turns out getting rid of that is pretty straightforward you just take some steel wool and Remove it. Got a nice smooth surface. Wipe that down. And then to make sure it's all dust free, use a tack cloth, which I actually have. A tack cloth is just a cotton cloth that's been soaked in wax, which makes it tacky. So it's just a great way to pick up all of those last stubborn tiny bits of dust and whatever that you don't want in your paint or your stain, or your varnish. Second coat. Break any bubbles and get a nice even coat. Beautiful. Now I am gonna do a little tiny bit of touch up on this 
spots that are that have damage marks. You don't have to wash this thing every single time between coats because that'll take forever and it'll waste a lot of turpentine. Life hack. Now we're gonna let that dry again and come back to it and give it another coat. It's been eight hours? Absolutely not. Layer number three. All right, there's only one way to say it. I screwed up. Don't do what I did. Follow the instructions. As it turns out, there's a very good reason why you're supposed to wait eight hours between coats. It's uh, like, I'm guessing that's why this happened anyway. My guess is if you let it completely dry, then when you put the next coat on, the solvent in the next coat won't liquefy the uh, previous coat that is dry. Um, I think that's what happened anyway, and that's why I got such blotchy coverage, because the uh, fresh stuff started, um, so it liquefied the previous layer, and then the fresh stuff started drying super quick because it was, you know, splitting its solvent volume with the, uh, the existing stuff. So it just became super tacky really fast and started sticking and it looks really splotchy. So I just started adding more to try and even it out so I could keep it flowing. And through a lot of fiddling, I think I managed to get it to look okay. Um, but I'm fairly sure I just turned a $40 piece into a $15 piece. I'm gonna let this dry completely this time and try and even it out with one more coat. We'll see how it turns out. All right, I've waited as long as I can possibly manage. Uh, it's pretty dry. And we have to talk quiet because a lot of people are sleeping. But I really wanna get this sold this weekend, so well, let's get this done. And I'm gonna have to be extra careful with this layer. I would like to just do a couple parts of it, but I know the nature of this stuff, I need to like have coverage on everything, otherwise it'll have a really gross looking finish. But, I think I can use the steel wall to focus on the areas that are too thick. And that should help even it out a little bit. All right, good effort. Here goes nothing. Okay, that's as good as this is gonna get. Even up the edges on the touch-up spots. All right. Still looks a bit too light when you're close up and comparing the two, but splotchiness is not that bad. You can still see it ended up a little thicker there, and there's this little problem area there. I think overall this turned out okay. Learned a lot. Number one, the stain with polyurethane one step process. I don't think it's easier and I definitely don't think it's faster because if you if I was using regular stain I would have put on one layer and then wiped that off with a rag and then let it dry for what is it like 20 minutes or something like that and then put on another layer after about an hour probably would have had the color I wanted and then throw on some polyurethane varnish and uh, leave that dry overnight and I would have been done in one afternoon plus a night to dry whereas this eight hours for each coat not the fast way to do things. It is the cheap way to do things, but it also has um, has some pitfalls. So if you guys go to use it, it's not something you can rush or you're going to have a bad time. The most exciting part for me, though, was that this was fun and it was easy. And it wasn't even that expensive. True, I did have quite a few of the supplies that I needed beforehand, and um, it would have been a better investment to go and buy varnish and stain but whatever we'll see how much i can sell this for i'll let you guys know what i managed to get for it i'm glad i got to experiment with this i look forward to uh the next slightly nicer piece of furniture that i get to mess around with if anyone is interested in seeing what it looks like when it's totally finished i'll throw a picture on my instagram tomorrow and by tomorrow for you guys that would be today
thanks for um, <laughs> coming on this <clears throat> this bumbling adventure. It was fun. I'm glad you were here. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're leaving it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing. Mm -hmm.